Let's talk business. So WebGrid. Um, I saw a presentation that where Bliss said by March you selected eighty nine thousand targets in WebGrid. Mm. Can you explain this game? What 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 is WebGrid? And what does it take to be a world-class performer in WebGrid <laughs> as you continue to break world records? Yeah. Um... <laughs> it's like a gold medalist talk. Well, yeah, you begin? know, I'd like to thank, I'd like to <laughs> yeah, thank exactly. everyone who's helped me get here, my coaches, my parents, for driving yeah. me to practice every day at five in the morning. Um, I'd like to thank God. <laughs> um, and just overall, my dedication to my yeah, craft. Yeah. The interviews yeah. with athletes are always like yeah. that exact. Yeah. It's like that template. Um, yeah. So, so, um, so WebGrid, WebGrid is, uh, is a, a grid yeah. of cells. <laughs> it, it's, it's literally just a grid. They can make it as big or small as you can make a grid. A single box on that grid will light up and you go and click it. Mm -hmm. And it is a way for them to benchmark how good a BCI is. So it's, you know, pretty straightforward. You just click targets. Only one blue cell appears and you're supposed to move the mouse to there and click yep. on it. So I, I like playing on like bigger grids because it, the bigger the grid, the like more BPS, it's bits per second mm -hmm. um, that you get every time you click one. So I'll say I'll play on like a 35 by 35 um, grid. And then one of those little squares, a cell, call it, target, whatever, will light up and you move the cursor there and you click it. And then you do that um, forever. And you've been able to achieve at first eight bits per second and you yeah. recently broke that. Yeah, I'm, I'm at 8.5 right now. I would have beaten that literally the day before I came to Austin, um, but I had like a, I don't know, like a five second lag right at the end. And um, I just had to wait until the latency calmed down and then I kept clicking, but um, I was at like 8.01 and then five seconds of lag. And then the next like three targets I clicked all stayed at 8.01. So if I would have been able to click um, during that time of lag, I probably would have hit, I don't know, I might've hit nine. So I'm there, I'm like, I'm really close. And then this whole Austin trip has really gotten in the way of my web grid playing ability. It's frustrating. Yeah. It's, so that's all you're thinking itching. about right now? Yeah, I know. I just I just want I want to do better. At nine. I want to do better. I want to hit nine. I think well, I know nine is very, very achievable. I'm right there. Um I think ten I could hit maybe in the next month. Like I could do it probably in the next few weeks if I really push. I think you and Elon are basically the same person because last time I did a podcast with him, he came in extremely frustrated that he can't beat Uber Lilith. As a droid, that was like a year ago, I think. Yeah. I forget, like solo. Yeah. And you, I could just tell there's some percentage of his brain the entire time was thinking, like, I wish I was right now attempting. Yeah. <laughs> I think <laughs> he did it that He night. did it that night. Yeah. He <laughs> stayed up and did it that night. Yeah. It's just crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, in, a, in, a, in a fundamental way, it's really inspiring. And what you're doing is inspiring in that way because, I mean, it's not just about the game, everything you're doing there has impact. By striving to do well on WebGrid, you're helping everybody figure out how to create the system all along, like the decoding, the software, the hardware, the calibration, all of it, how to make all of that work so you can do everything else really well. Yeah, it's just really fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also, that's part of the thing is yeah. like making it fun. Yeah, it's addicting. I'm, I've joked about um, like what they actually did when they went in and put this thing in my brain. They must've flipped a switch to make me uh, more susceptible to these kinds of games, to make <laughs> yeah. me addicted yeah. to like WebGrid or something. Yeah. Do you know Bliss's high score? Yeah, he said like 14 or something. 17. Oh boy. 17.1 or something, 17.01. 17 on the dot, 17.01. 17. Yeah. He told me he like does it on the floor with peanut butter and he like fasts, it's it's, it's weird. That sounds like cheating. Sounds like performance <laughs> enhancing. Uh, <laughs> Nolan, like the first time Nolan uh, played this game, he asked, you know, how good are we at this game? And I, mean, I think you told me right then, you're gonna, you're gonna try to beat me. I'm gonna year. get there someday. Yeah, I think I, I fully can. believe you. I think I can. I'm I think, excited for that. Yeah, so I've been playing first off with the dwell cursor, which really hampers my web grid playing ability. Basically, I have to wait 0.3 seconds for every click. Oh, so you can't do the click. So you yeah. have to, you have to, so you click by dwelling. Mm -hmm. You said 0 0.3? 0 0.3 seconds, which, which sucks. 
it really slows down how much I'm able to like how high I'm able to get. Yeah. I still hit like 50, I think I hit like 50 something trials, net trials per minute in that, um, which was pretty good. Um, cause I'm able to like, um, there's one of the settings is also like how slow you need to be moving in order to initiate a click, to start a click. So I can tell sort of when I'm on that um, threshold to start initiating a click just a bit early. So I'm not fully stopped over the target when I go to click. I'm doing it like on my way to the targets a little um, to try to time it just right. Wow, so you're slowing down. Yeah, just a a hair right before the targets. (laughs) This is like elite performance, okay. But that's still, it's it sucks that there's a ceiling of the 0.3. Well, there I can get down to 0.2 and 0.1. 0.1 is what oh, I've, good. yeah, and I've played with that a little bit too. Um, I have to adjust a ton of different parameters in order to play with 0.1, and I don't have control over all of that on my end yet. It, it also changes like how the models are trained. Like if I train a model, like in WebGrid, uh, like I bootstrap on a model, which basically is them uh, training models as I'm playing WebGrid, um, based off of like the web grid data that I'm so like if I play web grid for 10 minutes, they can train off that data specifically um, in order to get me a better model. Um, if I do that with 0.3 versus 0.1, the models come out different. Um, the way that they um, interact, is, it's just much, much different. So I have to be really careful. I found that doing it with 0.3 is actually better in some ways, unless I can do it with 0.1 and change all of the different parameters, then that's more ideal because obviously 0.3 is faster than 0.1. So uh, I could I could get there. I can get there. Can you click using your brain? For right now, it's the hover clicking with the dwell cursor. Um, we Before all the thread retraction stuff happened, we were calibrating clicks, left click, right click. That was... Um, my previous ceiling, um, before I broke the record again with the dwell cursor was, I think on a 35 by 35 grid with left and right click, and you get more, um, BPS, more bits per second using multiple clicks. Cause it's more difficult. Oh, because what is it? The bl- you get, you're supposed to do either a left click or like right click. Yes. Is it different color different colors. Something like this? Yeah, blue cool. targets for left click, cool. orange targets for right click is what they had done. Got it. So uh, my previous record of 7.5 was with, the, was with the blue and the orange targets, yeah. Which um, I think if I went back to that now, um, doing the click calibration, I would be able to, and being able to like initiate clicks on my own, I think I would break that 10 ceiling like in a couple days, max. Like, yeah, he would start making Bliss nervous about yeah. his 17. I mean, he Why be. do you think we haven't given him the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so what, what did it feel like with the retractions that there is uh, some of the threads retracted? It sucked. It, it was really, really hard. The day they told me was the day of my big Neuralink tour at their Fremont facility. They told me like right before we went over there, it was really hard to hear. My initial reaction was, all right, go in, fix it. Like go in, take it out and fix it. The first surgery was so easy. Like, like I went to sleep a couple hours later, I woke up and here we are. Um, I didn't feel any pain, didn't take like any um, um, pain pills or anything. So I just knew that if they wanted to, they could go in and put in a new one like next day, if that's what it took. Cause I just wanted, I wanted it to be better and I wanted not to lose the capability. I had so much fun um, playing with it for a few weeks, for a month. I had, like it had opened up so many doors for me and it opened up so many more possibilities that I didn't want to lose it after a month. I thought it would have been a cruel twist of fate if I had gotten to see the view from like the top of this mountain and then have it all come crashing down after a month. And I knew like, say the top of the mountain, but uh, like I, how I saw it was I was just now starting to climb the mountain and I was like, there was so much more that I knew was possible. And so to have all of that be taken away was really, really hard. Um, But then on the drive over to the facility, I don't know, like five minute drive, whatever it is. um, I talked with my parents about it. I prayed about it. I was just like, you know, I'm not going to let this ruin my day. I'm not going to let this 
um, ruin this amazing like tour that they have set up for me. Like I want to go show everyone how much I appreciate all the work they're doing. I want to go like meet all of the people who have made this possible. And I want to go have one of the best days of my life. And I did. And it was amazing. And it absolutely was one of the best days I've uh, ever been privileged to experience. And then for a few days, uh, I was pretty down in the dumps. But uh, for like the first few days afterwards, I was just like, I didn't know if it was gonna, ever going to work again. And then I just, I made the decision that it, even if I lost the ability to use the Neuralink, even if I lost, um, even if I like lost out on everything to come, um, if I could keep giving them data in any way, then I would do that. If I needed to just do um, like some of the data collection every day or body mapping every day for a year, then I would do it um, because I know that everything I'm doing helps everyone to come after me. And that's all I wanted. I guess the whole reason that I did this was to help people. And I knew that anything I could do to help, I would continue to do. Even if I never got to use the cursor again, then you know, I was just happy to be a part of it. And everything that I had done was just a perk. It was something that I got to experience and I know how amazing it's going to be for everyone to come after me. So might as well just keep trucking along, you know? Well, that said, you were able to get to work your way up to get the performance back. So this is like going from Rocky one to Rocky two. So when did you first realize that this is possible and what gave you sort of the strength, the motivation, the ter determination to do it, to increase back up and beat your previous record? Uh, yeah, it was within a couple of weeks. Like Again, this feels like I'm interviewing an athlete. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I like to thank my parents. Uh, the, road, the road back was long and hard, <laughs> fraught like with many movie. difficulties. <laughs> there were dark days. <laughs> um, uh, it, was, it was a couple of weeks. Uh, I think, and then there was just a turning point. I think they had switched how um, they were measuring um, the neuron spikes in my brain, like the bliss helped me out. Uh, yeah, the way in which we were measuring uh, the behavior of individual neurons. Yeah. So we we're switching from uh, sort of individual spike detection to something called spike band power, which yeah. uh, if you watch the previous segments with either me or DJ, you probably have some content. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So when they did that, it was kind of like a you know, light over the head, like light bulb moment, like, oh, this works. And um, this seems like, like we can run with this. And I saw the um, uptick in performance immediately. Like I could feel it when they switched over. I was like, this is better. Like, this is good. Like everything up till this point for the last few weeks, last like whatever, three or four weeks, because it was before they even told me, like everything before this sucked. Like, let's keep doing what we're doing now. And at that point, it was not like, oh, I know I'm still only at like, say in web grid terms, like four or five BPS compared to my 7.5 before. But I know that if we keep doing this, then like I can, I can get back there. And then they gave me the dwell cursor and the dwell cursor sucked at first. It's not obviously not what I want, but it gave me a path forward to be able to continue using it and um, hopefully to continue to help out. And so I just ran with it, never looked back. Like I said, I'm just kind of person, I roll with the punches anyway, so. What was the process, what was the feedback loop on the figuring out how to do the spike detection in a way that would actually work well for Nolan? Yeah, it's a great question. So maybe just describe first how the actual update worked. It was basically an update to your implant. So we just did an over the air software update to his implant, same way you'd update your Tesla or your iPhone. And uh, that firmware change enabled us to record sort of averages of populations of neurons nearby individual electrodes. So we have uh, sort of less resolution about which individual neuron is doing what, but we have a broader picture of what's going on nearby an electrode overall. And uh, that feedback, I mean, basically, as no one described, it was immediate when we flipped that switch. Uh, I think the first day we did that, you hit three or four BPS right out of the box. And that was uh, a light bulb moment for, okay, this is the right path to go down. And from there, there's a, a lot of feedback around like how to make this useful for independent use. So what we care about ultimately is that you can use it independently to do whatever you want. And uh, to get to that point, it required us to re-engineer the UX, as you talked about with the dwell cursor, to make it something that you can use independently without us needing to be involved all the time. And uh, yeah, this is obviously the start of this journey still. Hopefully we get back to the places where you're doing 
multiple clicks and uh, using that to control much more fluidly everything and much more naturally the applications that you're trying to interface with. And most importantly, get that web grid number up. Yep. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so how is the, on the hover click, do you accidentally click stuff sometimes? Yep. Like what's, how hard is it to avoid accidentally clicking? I have to continuously keep it moving basically. So like I said, there's a threshold where it will initiate a click. So if I ever um, drop below that, it'll start and I have 0.3 seconds to move it before it clicks anything. Okay. Um, and if I don't want it to ever get there, I just keep it moving at a certain speed and like just constantly like doing circles on screen, moving it back and forth to keep it from clicking stuff. Um, I actually noticed uh, a couple weeks back that I was, when I was not using the implant, I was just moving my hand back and forth or in circles. Like I was trying to keep the cursor from clicking and I was just doing it like while I was trying to go to sleep and I was like, okay, this is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To avoid the clicking. I guess, does it, does that create problems? Like when you're gaming, accidentally click a thing? Like, yeah, yeah, it happens in chess. Um, nice. I've lost, oh, yeah. I've lost a number of games because I'll accidentally click something. I think the first time I ever beat you was because of an accident. Yeah, click. Click, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a nice excuse, right? Yeah. You can always, anytime you lose, you could just perfect. say, that yeah. was accidental.